Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today, we are reading for Virgo season. This will be from August 22nd through September 22nd. Now, when I am doing these readings for the season, and it'll be all of your signs, individual signs in Virgo season, and how that's going to affect you, I use a boatload of cards. I use a boatload of decks. I will use my Radley Valentine Angel Tarot cards for the main reading. I ask for clarification from my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. Any words of advice from my Osha Zen Tarot cards. I then come back to Radley Valentine, my Archangel Power Tarot cards. I have been pulling one card from my um, Radley Valentine Guardian Angel cards, and I finish up with my Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Now, of, of all the decks, I have prayed, meditated, and infused them all with Reiki energy. But remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest. Okay? Okay. Um, Virgo season is going to be an interesting time. So now here, this is where I kind of give you a little recap on stuff. We actually have three planets that are, are direct. Mercury is direct, okay? And I believe that's direct in Virgo. And it, we do start, though, the shadow of retrograde as of the 13th because it goes retrograde in Libra seasons. And Libras, you know what that means. There's a lot of karmic resolution happening, and it will be happening in your season. But, you know, right now it is direct, though it does start that shadow, which means that it starts to slow down, and it, it's not, or at least it does, it appears to be slowing down. Now, Venus, and uh, Venus, which is in Libra, and Mars, um, can't remember what that is, I could be in Virgo season also. Now we have five planets retrograde, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, and Uranus. So, you know, there has there is some interesting energy there. Jupiter and Saturn, what, they're in Aquarius right now. Um, you know, Uranus is in Taurus. Okay, can't quite remember with my Neptune and Pluto right now. Are they still in Pisces? I don't think that they are. Anyway, on the 22nd of August, that morning, when it's still Leo season, uh, the, uh, we will have that second Aquarius full moon, and that will be at 8.17 a.m. Eastern Time. So we've talked about that, that Leo season has been bracketed by these two full moons. The last time this happened was, what, um, eight years ago, and the next time it'll be, I think, 11 years from now. Now, Virgo season officially begins at 3.35 p.m., and this is all Eastern Standard Time. So, it's going to be an interesting time. The one thing that clicked with me on Virgo, because Virgo season was kind of, was a little bit quiet for me. Um, it wasn't, I wasn't really getting any major downloads or not. Uh, it was just kind of, it's a wait and see type of energy. Um, you know, Virgo is an earth energy, but it's also the sixth sign of the, you know, when the, um, when the astrological year begins. So a couple of things was that, you know, the number six is the number of man. So then I'm thinking that, well, then Leo would have been, is the fifth sign, and fives are all about change. So there's a lot of changes that have been going on in Leo season. So now all of those changes come to Virgo, and Virgo now has to do something with them. Virgo has to, you know, solidify them. Virgo has to look at them and say, nope, not taking this anymore. Or, yes, we're accepting this. So Virgo's going to be taking a lot of those changes and really doing a lot of, um, of delving and looking and seeing what does this all mean and is this something that we can live with, something we cannot live with. So then that also means that when we come to Libra season, that will be seven, and seven is that divine umbrella. It is that divine number. Now, the other thing I noticed about Virgo season was we did have a lot of Virgo, you know, transits and things going on in Virgo itself, and we had a lot of Libra energy going on. We had a little bit of Scorpio and Pisces, but it seemed that Virgo and Libra um, were the main players in Virgo season. So, you know, Libra is about um, justice. Libra is about balance. 
And considering that Mercury will be retrograde when it, you know, when we are in Libra season, there could be a lot of, um, you know, there could be a lot of, of justice, um, you know, basically karmic justice being handed out during Libra season. But again, in Virgo season, we're getting ready for all of that. Okay, so let's just kind of go a little bit into this. So again, we said that, you know, I said that 22nd Virgo season begins. Let's pull a couple of my my rider cards. And yes, I prayed, medita- meditated on these also and infused Reiki energy. Let's see what we have just as an overview for Virgo season. Here we go. Choices. This has been coming up a lot lately for me. Choices. So here we have sevens. Seven divine umbrella. You know, basically, like I said, this is something that, you know, there's something over us that's not necessarily making it easy, but it's not necessarily making it hard. It's all about our choices. Now, our choices in what we do, it can be very positive. So we here we have, what is this, the, the um, olive branch, the wreath, which is very associated with, um, with Virgo season, but we also have the snake. We also have the, what is, what can, or here's up the, here's the snake. This is kind of a, just a, a serpenty thing. Then we have, this is a tower type. So there are things, we have some choices on what to do with all of this energy that just came from Leo season into Virgo. Do we build upon it? Do we make positive choices, positive changes, or do we just let everything crumble around us? A lot of it is hidden. So here we go. And that, that would, be a, that would be right because I was feeling that there was, you know, I was like, come on, what are, what's happening in Virgo season? And I wasn't getting very clear um, pictures or answers. Next card, though, here we are. And that one, so this is the Seven of Cups. Cups, remember, is water energy. It is our Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. We do have Pisces and Scorpio. We have a Pisces full moon. And we have something going on. Venus enters Scorpio, too. So, but again, I did, I did not see cancer. Now, we have our sword energy, aces. Now, so we have a seven, we have a one energy, because ace is a one. Swords is our Libra, our Aquarius. It's also our Gemini. It is our thought processes. It's hearing news. It's, it's our ideas. It's our, what you know, what are we going to, th- how are we going to think about this? What are we going to do about, not, I shouldn't say do so much, as what, where are we going with this? What are our challenges? Where, you know, how can we overcome them? So swords in itself, it, you know, it, the Ace of Swords is all about these new ideas, new possibilities. You know, now we just have to take those possibilities and bring it into that earth energy so we can actually make something with it. Okay, next card is, again, we have that, we have that swords energy. So, but this is the page, and the page's underlying energy is our is our earth energy. So this is really very much the Virgo and all the Libra energy that we have this month. Pages, you know, so, um, earth energy is, again, our Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. It's, you know, what we, you know, what we can make with our hands. It is our, um, you know, it is our work, job, career, our money, energy. You know how what what we can actually make with our hands, and then with the swords energy, it's like can we taking our ideas, taking all of the things that's swirling around us, taking that and actually creating that. So it you know it looks like we have a lot of choices. We have the ability to. Um, you know, and these are emotional choices. These are committed choices. We have the ability to think things through, to reason things through. Um, you know, do we allow our emotions to um, to overwhelm our intellect, our objectivity? Um, you know, it's it's going to be an interesting time in Virgo season. Okay, so now we have. Um, yeah, I told you Virgo season begins. In August, August 30th, Mercury enters Libra. Mercury is about our, you know, is our, um, you know, communication. And it's also a lot of this has a lot of karmic energy. Now, remember, we are starting to go into the shadow of the retrograde. And, you know, that's going to be on the 13th. So we're going to be in Mercury and we're going, Mercury is going to be in Libra for a little bit of time before it starts that shadow area, that shadow time. So we, again, too, Libra is the scales. Libra is justice. Libra is balance energy. 
So there could be some communication with, you know, that basically is talking about justice, balance. It could be very soothing to us. It could be a little bit um, un, unnerving to us at the same time. You know, it's all about, you know, all that change energy in Leo is now being um, put into play or put it being put into place during Virgo season. So let's see. Let's see if we're going to just pull one card for Mercury. Okay, and that starts at 1.10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you like those times. Here we go. Okay, so now we have an 8. This is a Major Arcana card. This is all about strength. This is kind of, and remember, here we have kind of that Leo energy. So we could be hearing things that just kind of, might be a little bit upsetting, might be a little bit, um, you know, disconcerting. We just have to push through it. We just have to reach out to our higher power, who could be your guardian angel, spirit guide, your voice of the universe, your divine, whoever that is, the source, and, you know, and just kind of work and push through this Libra, Mercury you know, energy that's going on. Okay, so now we have the new moon in Virgo. That will be on September 6th. And so Virgo, again, Virgo is the virgin. Virgo is, you know, has a lot to do with harvest, um, growing things, the earth energy. You know, Virgo wants things to be nice, you know, and the new moon is about new beginnings, new seasons. Remember, new moon to full moon is all about requesting. Full moon is release, relinquish, and request. Yeah, and the new moon to the full moon is the waxing moon. It gets bigger and bigger. So it's all about requesting. The new moon is also about, um, you know, making a lot of wishes, a lot of just putting things out into that universe. This is a good time for you to put out the things that, um, you, that will help you make a more comfortable life, okay? Full moon, release, relinquish, and request. And then the full moon, as it gets smaller, it is waning, and it comes back. That's about relinquishing. That's about getting rid of things. So on the on September 6th, we have that new moon in Virgo, 8.51 p.m. It's going to be, you know, I think that it could be a very grounding moon. I think it could be something that helps us through um, this season and might give us some of that clarity. It might bring us back. It kind of like, I'm kind of like it brings us back to Earth. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Well, now we have temperance. Temperance is that balance. It's one of those Libra types of cards. So here, this is a 14. Um, so that is a, you know, that is a derivative of a seven. So we have a seven, seven, and that can equal 14. Also too, as we go through our readings, remember to write down your numbers, write down any archangels that come to you. So, you know, this could be, this could be a time where we start to have that balance. We regain that balance in what's going on in the world and possibly in our lives too. So this is a very, this is very positive with this. I like this. Um, you know, it, 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 it kind of is, it's very soothing at the same time. There is some water energy with this because you can see that they're balancing out the cups. So, you know, just know that this could be one of those really positive times to help be, it, it could help us to be very soothing. Like it's like the universe is trying to soothe us down a little bit. It's like when our nerve endings are all over the place and it wants to just say, no, 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 everything's going to be okay, at least for the moment. Okay, so now in September 10th, Venus enters Scorpio. Scorpio is the detective. Scorpio needs to know things. You know, Scorpio also has a little bit of hidden energy. Venus in Libra, Venus loves Libra. That they, they, they're just they just dance together. So now Venus is coming out of that Libra energy into Scorpio. So there could be some secrets revealed on that emotional level, on that um, you know that love level, that relationship type of level too. Mars is entering Libra on the fourteenth. Mars is the god of war, uh, you know, is, is actually very associated with Aries, you know, so this is, this is kind of like wanting to just get out there and just fight, 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 but Libra's kind of saying, hey, let's look at both sides now, let's look at both sides, let's temperate, let's, let's, um, you know, let's use some temperance on this, you know, we can't just choose one side over the other, so that's actually, I feel that's actually going to be very calming to Mars. Now, we come to the 20th of September, 
that full moon is in Pisces. Now, again, too, Pisces is, you know, is the dual fish. One fish likes to look to the optimistic side, but there is that other fish that likes to go into the shadows, likes to go into the dark, wants to know more of the secrets, too. It has a little bit of that secret um, discovery like Scorpio does, but they don't really want to, they just want to know. They want to know. Now, you know, so, you know, they don't necessarily need to um, tell other people about it. They just want to know the secrets. And the full moon has a lot of different types of secrets. You know, we do not know what the other side of the moon looks like. We never see that side. This is also a time, because this is the water energy, this is also a time of very strong psychic, intuitive um, type of energy too and especially since we are coming up to then the September 22nd which will then be Libra season and it will also be the equinox so Libra season comes in at 3 21 p.m. now excuse me a second I was pulling the card for that full moon and it flew all the way here so excuse me excuse me excuse me and here we are here's this card it did it was upside down, and this is a 12. This is the hanged man. The hanged man is, we're going to have to look at things from a different perspective. We're going to, you know, what we know as, you know, it could be that what we know is as truth. We may find out, you know, oh, no, 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 things aren't quite the way we looked at them. Things aren't quite the way we saw them. You know, this, you know, what we thought was truth was not truth or what we thought was false was not false. You know, it, it's all about looking at things from a different angle. But it is a, you know, this could be a time of a new paradigm that is coming. Okay, so that would be that full moon in Pisces. And if you think about it, you know, like I said, Pisces likes to go and delve into that deeper recesses, the murky, mercury, the, the murky waters. So it could be, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be a very interesting time. Virgo has, you know, like I said, I, there was a lot of Libra energy. Now, yes, we do have Aquarius energy because of Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, and remember, Saturn, I know I'm going to say it again, Saturn is all about illusions versus reality. Um, you know, so we do have that air energy, but there was a lot of um, Libra energy, and, and Libra was kind of opposing some of the signs, and Virgo energy, and it was kind of opposing some of the, the, the signs too. For the most part, they were all partnering, but so we had Virgo energy, we had a lot of Libra energy, there is Aquarius energy. I did not see um, any fire energy, and I did not see, um, you know, the ones that I'm, you know, I'm telling you about, um, those, are, those are what I saw when I was looking through and, you know, just researching for this. Now, maybe you'll know more about it, and that's all good. I am very willing, but, um, you know, to learn or to, you know, to receive, but it was an interesting time. So we have the air, we have a little bit of water, not as much, air, earth, and a little bit of water, so... We will see what we will see. So Virgo season seems like it's going to be interesting. Okay, now let's see, though, be, yeah, as we go on, let's see what it will be for your sign in Virgo season. Hello, my Aquariuses. How are you? Well, let's see how Virgo season is going to be. And there's a lot, like I said, you, there's still your energy all around it, so you know, um, Jupiter and Saturn, but there's a lot of Libra energy too. So I think that's going to actually make things positive for you. Okay, we got a couple of cards that actually fell through. Let's see what they are. Very bizarre here. Okay, we'll put one. Okay, anything that's reversed, they're all reversed except for one. So we're going to do this pretty quick because we've got a little more than we normally use. But you know what? When they come out, they want to be seen. First card is, and so anything that's reversed is stronger energy. Page of Earth. Okay, Page's underlying energy is Earth. This is Earth also, so it's an Earth, Earth. Page is optimistic. You know, very much let's go after this. Usually the Page of Earth represents a new job or a new place in your career or a next step in your career. It's something that actually makes you feel very positive, very much, yes, I can do this, I want to do this. 
Um, this is not retirement. It's not It's not like a next stage into a retirement. But if you are retired, um, my Aquarians, you may um, start doing a new hobby. You may start doing, I don't know why I'm, but you know, if you're retired, or you may be getting a new career as a second career. Many people, they, you know, they, they basically, they retire from one job or one career and they start another side, another section, another start of their journey in something new, okay? But this is definitely something that says something's changing in the job situation. It's positive. It does bring you money. It is, it's something that also increases your joy and your optimism. All right, scholarly, dependable, patient, successful. Good news about financial matters. Wanting to do something more challenging, a new area of study. Okay, your next card, reversed. The page of water. So now, again, page's underlying energy is the earth. This is water. So this is an emotional commitment. This is something you've been wanting to do. This is kind of like, you know, like, oh my gosh, this, this pathway is opening up for me and it's exciting. It's something that, you know, it, it's like, um, I don't know if you're, you know, if you have an artistic bend or it's just something, there's also maybe a spiritual bend to it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to quit the one job, but this is something that is like, it feels right. Your journey is continuing and now you're, you're also not just doing it with the tangible, you're doing it also with your spiritual. Now this is also, could be about a new relationship with somebody special in your life too. All right, so this is intuitive, sensitive, artistic, friendly. A new person enters your life, a relationship begins a new phase. Heightened psychic abilities. Oh, well, you know, the two full moons that we've been talking about. So here we go again. Reversed. The king of earth. Now, the king of earth. King's underlying energy is air. It is your energy. Gemini and Libra energy. You know, and you know, you know what that's all about from the intro. And again, too, we have that earth energy. This is the subject matter expert. This is po the person that's in the prophet. That's a professional. Um, this could be uh, a lawyer, doctor. This could be somebody that has gone through lots and lots of studying. But this is somebody that knows his stuff. Now, remember. The king doesn't have, you know, male, female, that doesn't matter per se. But, but this is someone that knows his stuff, knows how to advance his career, possibly knows how to help you advance your career. This could even be a mentor that has seen something in you and wants to bring you to that higher level also. But the king of earth is, you know, is financially stable. The king of earth is very confident in his abilities. Generous, professional, re responsible, practical. A successful time. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered. The Midas touch. Here we go. Was this one? I think this was the one. Okay, this one's not reversed. The eight of water. Well, eights have unlimited opportunities. It's possibilities, probabilities. Water, again, is that emotional component. And this is kind of saying, I want to go, I want to move on, I want something a little different. There's so many things out there. It's seeing the possibilities and that it's, it's really pulling at your heart. It's really pulling at your, your sense of adventure and it's pulling at your sense of destiny too. Now, this is a desire to move on, the search for something more meaningful, spiritual and emotional growth. This last one is reversed. Justice. So now we have the only two cards that have any type of numbers is the eight and eight. Justice is, so write those down. Justice is Archangel Raguel. Write down Raguel's name too. This has a lot of Libra energy to it. This is balancing. There's a lot of karmic balancing here too. So things resolving, things coming to, coming to, you know, and I'm going to kind of say that maybe something that, you know, happened maybe many, 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 many years ago when you had that really, really nice balance, it's like that balance is coming back to you. It's like you're entering into a time of balance again. So this is fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. Again, I don't do um, legal advice, but this could be, this could be um, somebody that does give you legal advice. This could be also something with legal, you know, with legal um, karma type of energy too. All right. Let's say so you've got some interesting stuff. It's very hopeful stuff. 
there is some changes. It kind of feels like you have command over the situation also. It's like, you know, if you're in negotiations for a salary, it, I, I do feel like you have, a, you have a place of power in those negotiations. So, you know, you can always ask. You know, that's always my, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. If you ask, yeah, it could still be a no, but it could also be that yes. Here we are. Yeah, but it feels like you have you are in control. You have the you have the power in whatever this is all about. One, two, and three. John Holland. First card. Ah. Okay, reversed. Now we have a five. So we have the fives. Chant, you know, changes. Positive, negative. It's also grace. But you know, this has you know obstacles and challenges so you know kind of goes into this thing there might be some things some roadblocks pulled up there might be some things that said oh you you know you're very close you got the job oh we need to do one more test or we need to have you do one more exam or we need to see so there's always you know it's never never a, really a, a totally easy road for you my Aquarius is it's always like one more thing one more thing if you're prepared for it and if you just you know just kind of say yeah you know what Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You know, just prepare that it's not necessarily that even though this is all wonderful, it's not that it's all smooth sailings. Okay, sailing. There always, something always tries to divert you. And when I when that happens, a lot of times, you know, especially if you, like, I know that I need to do this. I know this is where I need to go. A lot of times, you know, negative energies try to come in and divert you. Don't let it. Next card. Six. So now we have a six. So eight, eight, five, six. Six. Okay, remember there are seven chakra energy sources. These are things that can, that, you know, that help to control certain parts um, of destiny, parts of how you, your security, you know, there's, so these are energy sources. Um, so from the root to the heart, these are more of your natural. From the heart, yes, the heart again to your crown, these are more of your supernatural. Your third eye is right here. Now, six is the number of man. It's the energies that you put into this. But this is your third eye, your third eye chakra. This is the receiver. This is your intuition. This is, and you know, there is a difference between intuition and, you know, wishful thinking. So you have to have some discernment with that. This is that, you know, now where the crown, the crown is the connection with your higher power, with the universe. So, yeah, but you do need to have a good connection with higher power universe in order to, you know, to utilize that, you know, that, that third eye. Now, you don't always have to be in agreement because if you, you know, if your third eye is very open and very, very aware, it also depends on how you use that third eye, okay? You know, you, you can be, there. you know, third eye people, and I don't know why we're going down this, but the people with the, when their third eye is open, they can all, they can be very generous, very much for, um, for the good of man, but they can also, there's others that can be very manipulative for that. Use that energy, use those messages in a manipulative way too. Okay, third eye chakra though, you know, I tell people to drink lots of good water, purified water, water that doesn't have added chemicals in it. Okay, next card is, here we go again. So you have a five, six, and a five. So those, you know, it, it, those are some interesting energies. So it, there is some changes. You know, you might be aware of the changes. Financial and material changes is what the five is. And this one, okay, it doesn't, not, it doesn't mean that it's negative. It doesn't mean that it's positive. It just means things are going to be changing for you. Be ready for them. Be, you know, the fact is that your main reading, your main reading does feel that this is all going to be very positive. So let's claim that one. Put that out there. Put out that positive. Okay, let's see what we have for Osha Zen Tarot. But you, you know, but trust your intuition on this because it will help you to navigate between those obstacles and it will help you to navigate for the betterment of the material and financial changes too. So trust your gut. Trust your gut a little bit. If it's, you know, if it's like, uh, remember, other people can be very, um, you know, can be very in tune. But um, like I said, you got to watch the people that possibly could be very manipulative too. All right, so here we have one card that kind of flopped out, and it is a two, two choices, crossroads, possible decisions.
But this is saying this is seeing things from a higher level. This is seeing that there are so many of these possibilities out, which comes with those eights. The eights are unlimited possibility. You just need to step back. You need to kind of look up a little bit more. Or you need to fly high so you can see those possibilities. You need to kind of get out of the emotional drama. You need, you know, whatever's going on, you need to step back, fly, and look at them. Okay? Like the eagle. Here we are. Now, okay, so this is an interesting one, too. Oh, you're, you've got some interesting cards. I know. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Anyway, this is understanding. This is understanding about these possibilities. This is understanding that you are not trapped as sometimes we sometimes feel that we are. You know, this is, you know, this bird, the, the, the story behind this bird is this bird is sitting there watching all these other birds fly free, not realizing that all this bird needs to do is just leave. Just leave and, con you know, or take a chance or you know, or think that, you know, think I can do this too. Nothing is holding this bird back, okay? The rebel. So now we have a four. Four has um, in, has um, leadership, stability, organization. And this is, this is probably a very good Aquarius energy. Aquarius is you do have a very, a little bit, very much so. You do have the rebellious tendencies. And that can actually do very well for you. Again, too, if you are thinking of a new job, it's always easier to have a, to get a job when you have a new job. I mean, it's always good to look for the new job when you have a job. So I would not kind you know, well, well I'm going to say I like the rebel because it's like trying new things. It's not doing the traditional. It's saying I want to go for things. It's breaking the chains that are binding you, which kind of goes along with this understanding which goes along with this possibilities that there's so much out there. Again, to, you know, I don't know, I, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, you think it through. And again, I know my Aquarius is always say, Deb, we think it through. So let's go on. And our this card, these are our Archangel Power Tarot cards. Again, this is Radley Valentine. Let's see what we have here. Okay, we have a couple cards already. Oh, yeah, this is very cool. Anyway, we have the Ten of Ariel, Tens transitioning, one zero new beginning, and zero has the uh, the universal God energy to it. And this is happy home, happy Aquarius, happy, and Ariel is Earth energy. But this is yep making making the best out of my situation, counting my blessings, um, basically being blessed at the same time. There is so very much to be grateful for financial success and the promise of retirement, a rich and rewarding family life. The King of Gabriel, King's underlying energy again is our swords. Um, you know, but it, this is a this is our fire energy. We did not have any fire energy, did we? I don't think we did. Fire is our well, yes, we did with the um no we didn't. Fire is our Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, passionate, burning, determined. This is seeing kind of for, forecasting a little bit. This is looking at that big picture. Again, it kind of goes along with the, you know, step away, look around a little bit more so. But this is very, very much um, energy. This is very much somebody that knows what he wants, knows what he wants to go after. But he looks at the big picture. He doesn't necessarily... Um, you know, he doesn't want to work with the details per much, so much. The details will take care of themselves. The details is for someone else to deal with. I, this is what I want. I'm putting it out there. I am just waiting for that to come. Keep your, okay, so this is generous, inspirational, dramatic, driven. Keep your eyes on the big picture. Leave the details to others. Experience that leads to success. Genuine concern for others, though. Last card here. Decision. Okay, so decision, decision, decision. We do have that 15, which does have a lot of five energy with it. This is Archangel Jophiel. This is kind of that, you know, do we go forward? Do we step back? You know, do we have what we need? Do we not? What do we need? It's kind of looking at that picture again, but it's also saying you need to believe in yourself. You need to think that the, all things are possible. And that, you know, I mean, that, that there is hope in this world. So here we go. This is Archangel Jophiel. Release yourself from that which holds you back. 
a need to detox, unnecessary worry based on a lack of self-confidence. So you've got so much happening here, my Aquarian, so much happening. It's now, a lot of it is the possibilities are unlimited. A lot of it is, you know, believe in yourself, um, have confidence in yourself, know that you have, you have what it takes to succeed. Let's, oh, okay. We have a card that is flying out. Hold on a second. We actually have two cards that flew out. Oh, three cards. Okay. Well, we're just going to read these through. Four of abundance. Abundance is earth energy. It's time to reflect upon your relationship with money. Are you spending it too freely or are you holding on to it too tightly? This can also relate on how to how you give of yourself to others. Is your heart open or are you holding back? Your hard work and wise investments will bring great success. The seven of emotion, that would be the seven of cups. Your angels are asking you to make an important decision that you've been putting off. It's likely you know which choice you should take, should make, but you're procrastinating so you don't upset someone else. Ask heaven for guidance and then make the choice that, ce that celebrates who you truly are. And then we have the healer of abundance, which I think is the queen of earth. Well, I mean, I think she is, I think the healer is the queen. The abundance is definitely earth. Never doubt that you can make a difference. Your creativity and ability to be innovative makes you destined to succeed. It might be time to expand your career, but don't forget to leave time for family. This situation involves a person, possibly you, who is down to earth with a gift for design or decorating. He or she is open-minded and nurturing. Well, you just had, you know, you, you had a lot of information right there. So, let's see. Now, let's go one last card. One last card. What crystal or energy would be helpful for my Aquarians? Here we go. All righty. And I told you to remember to like, share, subscribe, right? Click on the bell. Anyway, let's see what we have here. Blue Topaz. Ooh. I haven't seen Blue Topaz come out that much. Finding a spiritual ally. Higher wisdom. Abundance. There's the abundance again. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of those things that people are like, but I don't want to forgive. Yeah, but forgiveness frees you up. Okay? That other person either, or person situation either doesn't know or they don't care. Forgiveness takes the chains off of you. Okay? Again, to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell. You keep me on air, my Aquariuses, so thank you. As always, though, please know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.